hippity hoppity. We live in a society. So I set my course. I trust everyone has questions. Allow me to quickly explain the situation. Really, there isn't a situation at all. Uh, it's not really a big thing, actually. Well, it might be. I hope it's a big thing, but not in the way you're thinking. Edge Rabbit, why is that a thing now? Why am I, am I, am I changing my name again? No, I'm still Darkness the Curse. That hasn't changed. I'm just operating under a a brand name now. Why a brand name? Because that's the way of the YouTubes, as it were. Everyone has a unique brand and they operate under that umbrella and they usually have a name underneath the brand. And sometimes the brand is that person's name. To be, to be honest, Darkness the Curse ain't working. It hasn't worked for a long time, let's be fair. Now I don't want to change my name naturally because I'm known as that, but also I need a more catchy brand. Darkness the Curse is a bit of a mouthful. You can't do hashtag Darkness the Curse when you could, but it probably wouldn't track nearly as well as something that's more catchy like Edge Rabbit. As for Edge Rabbit, where does that come from? Well, I think the Edge part is very, very, very on the nose, and I don't have to explain that. Rabbit, let's just say it honors somebody who I lost. And we'll just leave it at that, because everything about me has to be at least a little bit depressing. That's the rule. Now, as far as everything goes, nothing's really changing. I'm still producing the same content I always have. There's no changes in terms of how I'm doing these videos, or whether I'm doing reviews, or anything like that. Like, a, nothing, nothing about what I'm going to be doing here really changes. It, it's mostly down to operating in a world where YouTube has, in itself, changed quite a bit since I first started doing YouTube all those years ago. In addition, you have to remember, Darkness the Curse, how well does it really apply to me anymore? I mean, it is still me, it's obviously still what I'm going to call myself, but... Compare, my content compared to now, compared to when I started doing that, I mean, people search for Darkness of the Curse because what they want those angry, screamy videos. Not, you know, what I do now, necessarily. In addition, most of my old fans, you guys, have already found me again. So it's not like I would attract necessarily anybody new under that name, but Edge Rabbit seems more in line with what the kids are into, or, and it's, I, I don't know. And, and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, but that's what we're doing. That's what's happening here. And if you have any questions, or complaints, or criticisms, feel free to put it all down in the comments. Also, you'll notice new links and stuff in the description because I uh, have decided to be more proactive in terms of trying. <laughs> I guess is the best way to put it. So, uh, remember, I do have an extended social media presence, so feel free to follow me on Twitter, uh, which I'm usually on there, uh, and Twitch, obviously, I'll be streaming, and, um, you'll see links to my books, because I still want to be a successful author, and also, you'll notice that there is an Audible link down there, because, this is the wrong one, I grabbed the wrong one, I meant to grab this one, uh, of this, not its sequel, Pride, is now in audiobook format, with me as the narrator. So you can check that out if you're so inclined. Okay, that's 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 all. That's that's wash that all away. I've already told you to like, subscribe, retweet, reblog, whatever you feel like doing. Now is not the time for that. You clicked on this video because you wanted me to talk about all this Resident Evil stuff, and boy howdy, did I pick just all of them, just to throwing them out there. Like like lately, it's just been Resident Evil. This just zombies everywhere. Let's get down to it! You guys have had so many requests, a lot of you guys who really support me, I appreciate every single last one of you because man have you been involved! And I really appreciate the fact that everyone's enjoying me doing more content lately. And in fact, I kind of have to at least half apologize because the whole you guys hate me thing has been kind of a joke. Because I was only doing those polls because I wanted to see what the audience really wanted or if the audience wanted anything at all. Like if I didn't get any votes, you wouldn't get any videos because no one would want to see what I have to say, so what's the point? But not only were you guys heavily involved in those polls, but you did tell me what you want to see. So, hey, you know, I'll, I'll do another poll probably when all this is over. But I gotta finish what I started, and since I've already kind of committed myself to doing the Resident Evil stuff, I might as well keep going with that, since it's doing well enough, I suppose. Alright, so from the get-go, we're gonna talk about a Resident Evil game that hasn't been a request, because I think this one is criminally overlooked. Because it is such a good game, and it does have an HD remaster, uh, that makes it even better. So, Resident Evil Zero. This game was released in 2002 on the GameCube, and it was easily one of the best-looking GameCube games at the time. It operates under the same graphics engine that the 
re remake of Resident Evil operates under, it is a gorgeous looking game. Even better now that it's been upscaled. The name Resident Evil Zero is because it's a prequel. This has to do with Alpha Team that was involved with the initial mansion incident that started the Resident Evil series. If you recall, in the original Resident Evil, you were operating under Bravo Team, who were assigned to the mansion in the area, because Alpha Team went dark. So now, you're taking under the role of Rebecca Chambers, as well as another character named Billy Cohen, who have to deal with the, well, issues of the area. And you basically get to see what happened to Alpha Team prior to the first game. Not only is that a really cool idea, but it does answer a lot of questions that at the time, we didn't have answers to. It gets you more involved with the overall story of Umbrella and how they were operating and what was really going on. More so than the first game initially did. It's a good idea, and the game is played in a really cool way. The original had the tank light controls, as you might imagine, so if you're playing that version, it might be a little hard to get into because of that. People tend not to care for those controls anymore. But if you do like them, I'll tell you that the HD remaster gives you two options. It gives you the modern controls they added to the HD remaster of the remake of the first game, as well as this. So if you want to play it with old school with the tank controls, you can, but if you don't want to, then you can change it, which is great. I like having both options available for players that want to decide what they prefer. As for the game itself, well, it's very, very, very similar to the original Resident Evil, so if you're an old school fan, I think you'll love it. Walking around spooky settings, you start out in a train, and I love trains, so already we're off to a great start. Fighting zombies and dealing with the different horrors before you. There's a big focus on these leeches in this game, which, great, that's gross, thank you for that. So naturally, the horror element is there in terms of gross-outs, as Resident Evil is usually pretty good at doing. And Rebecca and Billy have excellent chemistry, since they have to play off each other as the game goes. Instead of being like the first game in that you choose which character to pick, like you chose whether you were Jill or whether you were Chris, this game does something unique. Very unique, in fact, and I don't think any other game in the series does it this way. It's kind of a precursor to what they did in 5, where two characters were working together the entire time. Except instead of a co-op concept, you as a single player are controlling both characters. You can swap back and forth between them to deal with various situations, while an AI controls the other character. You can also manually control them, though I don't necessarily recommend that. And having the AI shoot, well, they, they're pretty good about doing that, so it's not that bad in that regard. Many of the puzzles in the game require you to utilize the character's different strengths and weaknesses, as well as doing different things at the same time in completely different areas. You can control each character when they're on completely different parts of the map. So suddenly you have to keep track of where each character is right now in order to solve the various puzzles. And again, you have to remember, each character has different abilities. Rebecca, since she's a medic, is the only one that can mix herbs. Which, if you know anything about Resident Evil, is actually mission critical. Like, mixing herbs is the best way to heal yourself. You have to mix them together to get more benefit. Billy can't do that, so it's usually a better idea to make sure Rebecca is the one getting the herbs and mixing them together. Billy, on the other hand, is stronger than Rebecca, so he's a bit better at combat and he can push large objects where she can't. So it's a matter of balancing out the two. To make the game, while still very reminiscent of old school Resident Evil, a unique experience in its own regard. Again, I don't think any other game in the series operates with these kind of mechanics. So if you're looking for a fresh take on old school Resident Evil, and you haven't tried Zero, I would say give the HD version a try, because it is a really good game, and it is definitely a unique take on the overall Resident Evil experience, and it's a great story even on its own. Moving swiftly forward, let's talk about RE2 and 3. Now, I haven't said much about the original RE2 and 3 because, let's be real, you guys know what I'm probably going to say. They haven't aged well. They have the same tank controls like the original RE did. It, 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 it would be silly for me to sit here and tell you about them when you know that it's probably going to be a similar road as the original, where I respect it, but you have to admit that they're dated, and RE2 and 3 suffer from that. I mean, they have different settings than the original, like you're in a city, Raccoon City. They're major plot points when it comes to the overall series, but now that there are brand new remakes, it's a bit hard to say whether it's worth going back to playing the originals. Though I will say the remakes cut quite a bit of content from both games to make a core, more cohesive, 
flowing narrative when compared to them. So if you want more of the story, whether it be considered canon or not, and a unique experience, I would say give the originals a try in that regard. But from a gameplay perspective, unless you're a real hardcore, old school Resident Evil player, you're probably going to have trouble getting into them. Now as for the remakes, which is going to be my main focus here, well, I think it's fair to say that RE2, um, very little needs to be said. RE2, as a remake, was almost universally praised for its execution, which is a sadder to me, because usually remakes are very dangerous things to do. I mean, let's be fair, movie remakes have been an absolute mixed bag and a Christmas nightmare overall. It depends. Some of them are alright, but some of them just aren't. Some of the movies are like, why are you remaking this? You don't have to remake it. Now, this kind of translates a little bit over to games, but you have to remember when it comes to video games, Remaking them can be a benefit in many regards. Sometimes when you remake a game, you're doing it because back when you first made the game, the technology was just not available to make the game the way the developers would have made it had they been able to. Now that visuals have been updated overall, just a graphical overhaul can enhance a ton of experiences, and I think the initial remake of the original Resident Evil kind of proved how much better a game can be when applied to modern technology, even if the controls and overall experience remain the same otherwise. But RE2 handled this differently, where they actually changed quite a bit of the game itself and the way it's played. Which is a bold thing to do, because RE2, the original, was often considered the best of the original Resident Evil games. So, touching that in any way and changing it was a very risky proposition, but I'm glad it worked out. This is the introduction of both Claire Redfield, Chris's sister, and Leon Kennedy, who I'm sure many of you already know about if you've been watching these videos so far. Two was their introduction to the series in general, and they are stuck in the middle of a zombie outbreak in Raccoon City. The initial catalyst for the exposure of Umbrella. Past the mansion incident, this is what that whole thing evolved into. Raccoon City is often referenced in many, many extended media when it comes to Resident Evil, because this is where Umbrella was fully exposed, and many of the plot points here carry over to many of the other games and make the series effectively what it is now. Now, as for a gameplay perspective, I already thought it was really interesting that they decided to go back to the over-the-shoulder controls. Because, frankly, after RE6, I thought that was a dangerous idea because the over-the-shoulder controls tend to lean towards a more action focus. But the RE2 remake proved that this does not have to be that way. Just because the camera's facing over the shoulder doesn't mean the game has to have an action focus. Yeah, your aim is better, but that does not necessarily mean that the game is any less scary. And the fact that they handle equipment much the same as they did in the old games, means that you're always scrounging for inventory space or trying to make sure you have enough ammo. Many times during the game, your option is running, not fighting, which is a considerable departure compared to 4, 5, and 6 for that matter. They may have changed the camera to line up with those games, but the actual core mechanics line up with the concept of the original RE2, where it's about survival, not always fighting, and I'm so glad they handled that well. The game, by the way, is absolutely gorgeous. It carries over from 7, where the visuals are mind-bendingly real. We're hitting a point in gaming where sometimes it's going to be hard to tell whether these are real actors or not because that's how good 3D models have gotten. We've come a long way in the last 20 years, and this game definitely shows what modern technology is truly capable of when done right. The game follows a fairly linear path, but it sort of branches out where you still have to look around and try to find stuff. There's puzzles, again, much like old school Resident Evil, and you have to figure out where to go, what to do, and it involves a lot of wandering and looking around. The problem with that is, of course, that it's very dangerous to do that because there's zombies everywhere. This is quintessential point blank, in your face, Resident Evil style. And I love it for that. And I'm also so glad the game was well received because people could have easily been mad that it was different from the older Resident Evil 2. But, you know, they kept enough in where it's still recognizable as the same story while changing it up enough to make it more concise. The cut content means the game is a bit shorter, but to be honest, I kind of prefer that. In many of the older games, a lot of the stuff you would be doing felt more like filler than anything. So cutting out unnecessary areas and making the game flow more as a story so you're not stuck wandering in an area you have no reason to care about at all definitely makes for a better experience. While it does help that there are two stories since you select either Leon or Claire, to be honest, the stories don't vary that much. They're pretty much the same basic tale, except that Claire has more interaction with Sherry Birkin and Leon has interaction with Ada Wong. Other than that, they follow the similar path overall. 
so they don't branch out too much and I think that does kind of hit replay value right in the kneecap because that means that yes you can play both stories and yes you probably will but you're not gonna get that varied of an experience but to be fair the original Resident Evil when you picked either Jill or Chris did it vary that much between the two no, it didn't. There were some differences. Jill had Barry around to help her, and Chris had to get Rebecca to play the piano for him since he doesn't know how to read sheet music. Y you had to play the Moonlights in honor to open the, the wall. That, that mansion was weird. We've been over this. While I respect the RE2 remake and think it's a great game, I also am definitely in the party of, I don't think this is nearly as good as you guys think it is. I'm not just saying that to be contrarian. I literally thought that when I first played it, like, I never thought that RE2, even the original, was the best of the original Resident Evil series. I actually always preferred the first one, if I'm being frank. And that's no different here. I vastly prefer the remake of the first one compared to the remake of 2. It doesn't help they added a new mechanic that, I have to admit, must be good because everyone seems to love it but me, but X gonna give it to you. Look, I don't like the idea that Mr. X can show up frickin' anywhere he wants, anytime he wants, and surprise you. Now you might be saying, doesn't that enhance replayability if you don't always know where he's gonna be after a certain point? And yes, that is correct. But it's also violently irritating. If you can't predict him at all, it means that replaying the game and getting better at it isn't necessarily gonna help you with this one particular aspect. It means that no matter how much you play the game, you're never going to be able to completely predict where he's going to be at. I mean, not wholly. But the game already scales up difficulty based on the amount of zombies that are, that are trying to eat you or the amount of liquors that show up because liquors are a complete pain in the butt in this game. Having Mr. X on top of that really, 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 really makes this way more obnoxious than I think it should. Now again, I completely get why people think this is way scarier though because that means that no matter how many times you play the game, he can always surprise you. And that does enhance the experience from a horror perspective, so I gotta give it that, but I don't care for it from a personal perspective. Now, if what I just told you sounds good to you, in that it sounds like something you would enjoy in having a game that does somewhat change a little bit no matter how many times you play it, then go for it, because that's the way it works. I'm just saying that for me, this wasn't great. But, hey, I'm weird. Just, just deal with it. Either way, it's a great game. Like, a fantastic example of how to do a remake right. There's no question there. So, no matter what complaints I may have with it, however minor they may be, I would recommend it to anybody because it's a great experience, especially if you like Resident Evil. Now, as for RE3, well, this is again where I'm going to diverge because it seems like everyone complained about this game, and I still don't get it. I don't understand. Like, everyone's like, oh, they cut content. Yeah, oh, uh, they did that in two. What are you talking about? They, they did the same thing. Like, they just, they just made the, the narrative shorter and more concise. It's still the same story, basically. They just cut out a lot of extra filler, just like they did with the RE2 remake. Did they cut out more here? Maybe, but I think it's more down to the fact that you play only as Jill and Carlos briefly. Whereas in RE2, you had two different characters to play through similar but different stories twice. Here, it's just the one tale, no matter how many times. So I think it feels like less as a result. But for me, again, personally, I always like short games anyway. Any game that overstays is welcome, like, let's be real, RE4 is mind-numbingly long. And they could have chopped a bit of that out. I mean, it, uh, people like longer experiences, but even rushing it, like, it's still like a 14-hour action game, which is just nuts to me. The RE3 remake might give you six hours, eight if you're bad, and that's about it. Now, replay value for me was very high because I adored this game. From a mechanics perspective, I think it's amazing, and I think the action and set pieces are phenomenal. Nemesis was always one of my favorite POW tyrant variants, and Jill Valentine is my favorite character in the entire series. So from the get-go, I am very biased towards RE3, just in general. But I do think that much like 2, they handle everything extremely well. Everything is dolled up, the game looks absolutely drop-dead gorgeous, voice acting is top-notch, and the combat is just so damn satisfying, even though it's still a survival horror game. There's still situations, plenty of them, where you have to run. 
and I mean run a lot, because Nemesis just doesn't want to die. He stalks you throughout the entire game. But unlike Mr. X, this was someone else's complaint, Nemesis doesn't show up whenever he wants. He has scripted events, and you might say that dumbs down the replay value, and it does. But it does mean that whenever he does show up, the situations are largely largely more enhanced. Like, he burns entire buildings down, there's arenas where he transforms multiple times. I mean, every fight with Nemesis, whether they were scripted or not, which they were, was just mind-blowing and just satisfying as hell. I adored every waking moment of RE3. It's one of my favorite experiences in recent memory, and I must have replayed this game five, six times on multiple difficulty votes, and I never do that anymore. I never bother to go through games again, and even if I do, I certainly don't upgrade the difficulty because I don't have time for that. I actually played through this game on every single difficulty mode possible, just to try to get as many achievements as possible. The only one that I didn't do was the hardest one, because I got to the final boss fight, and let me tell you something, the final boss fight in RE3 on, I think it's Inferno mode, is just, okay, it's not impossible, but I did not have time for it, <laughs> but, yo, this is a good, good game, and I wish people would really appreciate it some more, because I don't think it did anything really wrong, it's still a ton of fun to play, maybe you'd say, yeah, but it's too short, I want a longer experience, and if that's your problem, okay, but I still think it's worth it, that's just me, though. Real quick, let's talk about the other thing that involves the RE3 remake, which is Resident Evil Resistance. What is Resident Evil Resistance, you may ask? Well, Resident Evil Resistance is a multiplayer game that came with RE3. Some people say it's RE3's multiplayer mode, but that's really not accurate since Resistance should be its own standalone thing. In fact, when you buy RE3, it installs Resistance as a separate game entirely. Why it's not just sold as a separate game entirely, I do not know. Because that is the first thing that drove me crazy about this. They don't seem like they should go together. It's nice to include it as a bonus on top of RE3, like I'm okay with that, but I think Resistance would have done a lot better overall if the option to buy it standalone was also an option. I had a lot of friends, in fact, all of them, who just weren't interested in RE3 like I was, but they were interested in Resistance, because Resistance is a very unique and amazing concept that I adore. It's similar to games like Dead by Daylight, where one player controls, in this case, a mastermind, while teams of four try to defeat, or in this case, escape the mastermind. The player characters are all test subjects in Umbrella Test, and the mastermind is responsible for making sure they don't escape, in basically making sure they die to get data on the virus they're infected with. You see them through cameras, and you switch which cameras you're looking through, and use player-built decks to summon various monsters before them. Each mastermind has different perks, strengths, and weaknesses. I love playing as the mastermind more than the player characters, and I prefer to play as Dr. Annette Birkin, who not only enhances my own personal playstyle, she's big on infections and slow deaths and stuff like that, but also, I'm sorry, I don't, I, don't, I don't mean to get like this, but Annette is such a MILF. I, I just love her. Like, she's terrifying, but also strangely attractive. And I don't know why I'm like this. This is why I always get my heart broken. Anyway, what was I saying? Right, the game. Uh, but yeah, each mastermind has different super moves, usually involving summoning a different giant monster. The survivors are also unique based on which character you choose, and they all have different abilities and, you know, supers to work with as well, as well as the weapons they buy. One of the big problems with Resistance that has never really been resolved is the balancing issue. It's very tough to play as the mastermind because you're always struggling to not only find where the survivors are, but then on top of it, your abilities don't really compensate for their abilities. Like, they can always usually overpower you. And since the entire matches are always timed, you only win if that timer runs out. It doesn't matter how many times you kill them, they lose a lot of time for dying, but they always respawn. Which makes this game different than Dead by Daylight in that regard, because when a killer in Dead by Daylight kills somebody, that person is gone. They're dead. That's part of the winning condition. But here, even if you manage to kill people, and I do that all the time, they still respawn. And the deficit of the timer, it doesn't necessarily correlate with them dying. So really the game amounts to you just stalling around. 
And it really stinks that this game didn't take off, because part of the problem is that people couldn't buy it on its own, but the other issue is this balancing problem. Had they made it so that the survivors would, like, you know, stay dead, because it's hard to kill somebody, like, it's not like it's an easy thing to pull that off, I think it would be a lot better because it would be more balanced. You could leave most of the mechanics the same and have it much more balanced where people would be more willing to play Mastermind. I love the concept of this game. Looking through cam cameras, being the Mastermind, watching the survivors squirm before me. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, and I actually prefer the concept more than Dead by Daylight. I don't like Dead by Daylight because Dead by Daylight is so samey. Every single freaking game. Kill the survivors, or if you're a survivor, Fix the generators. It's always the generators, every single time. In Resistance, even the survivors have different objectives based on which map you're on. And much like any kind of multiplayer game, there are limited microtransactions, but they're only for cosmetics. I adore Resistance, and I really wish more people would give it a shot, because I think it could be a ton of fun. But at this point, I, I, I don't think they're going to commit to anything new with it. And it, that's a shame, because the concept is so good and I wish it would have taken off a lot better than it has. If you guys want to play it, by all means, I'm going to try to talk my friends into it, because at least one of them has it now. But, uh, yeah, I'll be honest, when I was getting footage for this, it was pretty hard to find a match, because the player base has pretty much fallen off quite a bit. It's only the hardcores like me that really enjoy the game that just chose to stick around. But <laughs> the other thing about Resistance is that whoever wrote the music for this game, like, this is a this is a multiplayer game that not many people were going to be able to play unless they bought RE3. You did not have to make the theme so fire, and yet you did. Because the main theme for Resistance is just the most outrageous level of emotional edge. Like, I've never resonated so well with a musical score in my life. It's, it, it's phenomenal. So... Ah, yes, God, it's so sad that Resistance hasn't panned out nearly as well as it has. Again, if they correct the minor balancing issues and let people get the game on its own without buying RE3, I think it would do a lot better and actually be a competitor to Dead by Daylight, but it might be too late for that now. Well, uh, this Resident Evil talk still isn't over, is it? RE8 it won't be out for another week at least? Well, depending on when you see this video. Maybe less than a week, depending on when I get this footage uploaded. I don't know how long I'm going to be. I'm usually, I usually edit pretty quick, but I have to record some more gameplay footage before I actually edit. Look, you don't even know about all that. Anyway, don't forget to like, comment, and retweet, and do all that, and and and, 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 and click the. It's, it's just share or whatever. I don't. It's it's uh, Edge Rabbit Productions featuring Darkness the Curse. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.